It's the Friday edition here on Zero Block 30, and today we have five rounds in the magazine. Round number one. You already probably know about this story. A boxer in Russia decided to fight a fucking grizzly bear, and he knocked him out. We're going to tell you how and discuss a little bit if we think that we could do that. I think pe people think bears are a lot tougher than they are. Bears just... <laughs> I, like I, I mean, I understand bears being angry, but if you took the teeth and the claws out of a bear... I could beat a bear. With that's, no like saying, that, that's like saying if you take the engine out of a car, I can run faster than it. Like, well, it's, it's not because what if I had a 50 caliber pistol in my pants? <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah. Why not? And I could right. definitely fuck them up. One-on-one uh, yeah. -on -one fight, anything goes. Or as they say, Brazil, Valet Tudo, I think I could take a, a bear. I think you're on drugs, but okay, we'll get into it. What about koala? All right, number two, round number two. We needed the Space Force now than ever because there's a giant cloud of alcohol that's been floating around our solar system. I think it's probably ever clear because the skies have been very clear at night and we're going to do a little moonshine in round number two. Round number three, there's a John Gruden effect that's going to affect the military as well. We're going to give you some advice on what you should and should not put into your emails. I'm constantly, I mean, if you've watched The Office at all, ever, you should know that IT departments can go into your email. Like, and that's protected. You don't have any type of privacy rights in your email when it's no. a, a dot wherever you work. That that's I think that they could probably go through my Barstool emails. Not uh, a lot's going on there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah I'm sure they can. They really want uh, to. It's probably yeah. like in the sign up stuff, right? Probably. It's all not fine tuned language that you know nobody reads. Yeah. Uh, round number four. There's a bunch of military veteran benefits that we don't know about. Lethality Jane talked about it a little bit on Twitter where she was talking about being able to go to national parks. Some of these things can save you a lot of money if you don't know about it. Kate went through the mentions and found some of the best ones. I'm sure we're all going to learn something here today. And I anytime did. you can get something for free, I absolutely love it. I mean, free stuff. I, I mean, if I'm going through McDonald's and like the McDonald's by my house where I go get uh, Eggman Muffin or a Southern style chicken biscuit with a round egg and cheese and an egg muffin on the side. Mm. When I get that in the morning, there'll be a little sticker on the side that says 15% off McDonald's. I'm not going to that window and being like, hey, I was actually in the military, even though I'm not now because I have a beard and stuff, but I would appreciate a discount. But if I'm going somewhere where it's going to actually benefit me big time, like going to a national park, buddy, you better believe I'm saying that. Oh, yeah. You better mm -hmm. believe it. Stupid not to. And number five, it's time to update the safety brief. There's a fella in India who decided that he was going to act revenge out on a pit viper that had, I guess, bit one of his family members. And he took revenge on it in a way that was good initiative, bad judgment. We can't have that. So we're going to update the safety brief so you don't make that same mistake as you go into your weekend. And if it's going to be a nice little Saturday like it is here, it's finally dropping down the temperature. It's so nice outside. Yesterday I had some arborist. Um, Kate, off the top of your head, what's an arborist? Tree. Tree is exactly right. We had some tree people come over to the house to get a, uh, all the dead limbs and things like that before winter comes so we don't have any dead trees falling onto our cars or onto our house. Well, they had to take out two of my palm trees because last year we had the big time winter storm came through, killed two of the palm trees. They're not coming back, which... It's very sad, honestly. Nice. It like broke my heart whenever I, because I love those palm trees. I was mm -hmm. very excited about them and now they're dead. So we had to get them taken out of here. So if you need to sit outside, not underneath your palm trees, but underneath your oak trees and enjoy some nice little crisp fall weather before the game's kicked off, do that with our friends at Black Rifle Coffee. It's the best coffee in the biz. They're going to send it to you, whether it's from Tennessee or Salt Lake City, Utah. I, I'm not sure. Even though uh, Black Rifle is the presenting sponsor, they fucking love mentioning that they that they roast it in Tennessee and Utah. I'm not sure people care about that unless you're from Utah or Tennessee. But you should care because they're going to have brick and mortar stores popping up all the place. Kate and I actually, I don't think you were there, Cons, but when we went to San Francisco and Seattle, no. we went to the very first Starbucks. I wonder if eventually, because I could see Black Rifle having damn near as many locations eventually as much as they've grown and like how their business is going you'll be able to sit outside a nice little location some of our listeners uh one of the guys that's a captain in the army national guard in florida went to the brick and mortar store that they just opened in niceville and he said it was fucking lovely that there's all kinds of people in there everybody was being so friendly like they were getting people in and out doing it up Love that. Yeah, the line for that? In Salt Lake City. It's unbelievable. It's really, really modern looking too. And it's just nice. Oh, you cozy. went to it. Yeah. 
You yeah, did. I've, been, I've been to the one in Salt Lake City. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, because I go on my annual trip. Mm. Utah and Tennessee, that they that that's where they roast it. I pick it helps me picture. I picture the mountains. I picture like a little roast house. I have no idea what it looks like. But I picture like this quaint little roast house in the Smoky Mountains, and a and a and a man with a big spoon stirring roast and beans. <laughs> Maybe a I, I like that. That's, I that's also, how they make it. I yeah. in my state power rankings that I would leave Texas for, Tennessee is top two. Why? Yeah, that's where Pat's family lives, and they live near outside of Knoxville, near the Great Smokies, and it's gorgeous out. It's like so pretty out there. Tell number me one for me is Colorado. Colorado mm. is the number one state on my power rankings, just because they're like legalizing everything out there, but not like cocaine and shit like uh, Oregon is. The Oregon's going a little far <laughs> for my <laughs> for my for my taste. But Colorado is wonderful. Tennessee, any place that has legit Four Seasons, that's there because you can enjoy coffee at Four Seasons. So you might as well do it with BlackRifleCoffee.com with the promo code zero. You're gonna get a nice deal to have your coffee at home every single day. Check out BlackRifleCoffee.com. Kate, there's a lot of things that are going on in the world. You are knee deep in your new adventure. I want to start off the show with your new adventure called High Chair. Tell us a little bit about High Chair and what you're doing there. Yeah. So I wanted to start. I've been holding back from blogging mom stuff. For, I don't know why. Sometimes I get a wall in my head with content, but I kept telling myself it's not barstool. It's not barstool to talk about mom stuff. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't think parenting and mom stuff is lame. And I all. want to say this is despite my advice for years. <laughs> for <a long> time, <laughs> yeah. This. And I know they have pod fathers, but moms do have, I think, a different perspective, especially like in the first year when you're breastfeeding, when you're still in going through all sorts of pains and hormones and all this stuff. So I it just makes me laugh, Kate, though, that you were like, oh, I don't know if this is Barstool. And then you look at what's on Barstool and there's no rhyme or reason to anything that's on and that's Barstool. What, finally, I decided the most Barstool thing you can do is just to be genuine. And right, I wasn't yeah. being genuine because I wasn't talking about what I wanted to talk about. So, yeah. It's not a podcast or anything. It's just going to be, I'm going to try and do at least one blog a day, something about being a new mom, a new parent. Um, and it's for new dads too. Like it's that first year, especially is what I'm going to be focusing on. But if you have toddlers, whatever, I'm taking suggestions, but uh, so, and I'll be going to be doing like product reviews because so much shit. There, oh, we, what about, what about a ZBT high chair crossover? where you just talk shit about your baby's daddy and say, I'm, I wish a motherfucker would have and things that Pat should improve on. Okay. I mean, <laughs> that, relationships, huge part of it. So that's definitely something I'm covering too, but I, I wish definitely a motherfucker do would have mm -hmm. product reviews. Cause there's so much shit we bought that we ended up not using or ended up hating or ended up like, Oh my God, we need And you said you're only need like three onesies when you were starting out. Yeah. I like, what's the realize. biggest, what's the biggest <laughs> thing you think like, wow, I really thought we were going to need this and we don't need this at all. We have a whole like three boxes in the closet of shit that I thought we would need. That but there's, is there one thing off the top of your head? That's like the biggest, like, wow, surprise. Uh, well, some of, you know, what keeps the industry going is that a lot of this stuff is gifts. And mm. so you're afraid to talk shit on it because your aunt got it for you. In my case, it's something a coworker got me. That is very nice that we ended up being like, Stroller. Oh, I hate this. Uh, no, no, not that was Chaps that got me the stroller. We still use that. Um, but so it's, it's uh, but I'm going to just be saying it. So tune into High Chair. It's just going to be blogs every day and stuff like that. So it, thanks. it's usually yeah. the most expensive thing cons and the kid doesn't like it immediately. Yeah. And then it's you never see it. Very expensive. Like that's, uh, it doesn't matter. I don't think kids care about what's in the pile of clutter it's just having the pile of clutter that makes them happy like if yeah if, if mccartney's nine if i took all of mccartney's toys out and just replaced it with amazon boxes and some like markers mccartney'd be like hmm, that's fine like as long yeah. as there's <laughs> just shit everywhere is essentially all you need now cons i don't want to ignore you either there's been some posts that's been going on around army football and west point so we need to get your thoughts on it there's a tweet that went very very viral <laughs> this week and i want to uh, there was a stat line that I that blew my mind. It takes a mm -hmm. lot now. I'm almost 40 years old, which I just figured out today. By the way, I signed up for this medical appointment and in it, you have to put your date of birth. And whenever I was done, it said 39 year old male. And I was like, no, whoa, no. <laughs> and then I thought about it. I was like, fuck me. I am 39. I'm almost 40 mm. years old. I, I had no idea. Found that out this morning. But that being said, there's certain times where I'm very, very surprised when a stat surprises me. And mm -hmm. that happened. 70 points you guys gave up with time of possession, only 14 minutes. Is that true? 
Yeah, they had a handful of touchdowns that was one or two plays into the drive. They had just some very talented kids playing receiver. Their kid, uh, the kid, the Wake Forest quarterback Hartman was slinging the rock all over the place. He just played really well. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, 70 credit, you points, though, in only 14 minutes. That's mind blowing. Yeah, that, there were. I mean, if I would have to go back and look and see how many of those players are 30 plus yards, but I bet you six of them, five it's of them. Not like there's pick sixes because that could happen. I mean, there was like, one pick six. There was oh, there one was. pick six. Okay. We, we, we had a fourth and four. We actually had a really good designed fake field goal, executed it really well, except for the part where the defender just jumped the route and made a very good play and then took it back to the house. So there, that that's another one. It was just a Speaking lot of good of timing running. plays. Did you guys see that viral play? that happened in high school where the kid mm-hmm. who's an outside linebacker goes yeah. onto the, uh, goes onto the edge. Yeah. And as soon as the ball was snapped, they did a little pitch out. Like they had done a, probably a ton of times. The kid just picked it off and ran right to the end zone. Mm-hmm. That's a play that whenever you're older, you sit around with your grandson or granddaughter. Oh, and yeah. like, Look, I know Papa looks like a piece of shit now, <laughs> but back in the day, your pappy was getting after it, son. Like we were Glory just fucking days. doing it. And and the unlikelihood of that play is such that when you tell the story, people, I think initially, a lot of them just wouldn't believe you. Like, oh, there goes Chaps again, telling about that time he intercepted that that pitch in the backfield. Like, yeah, right, buddy. But sure enough, he did. But, but- that's something that you could lie about, Cons, because yeah. in your day and age, it's not like now where everything goes up on huddle or whatever. Right. Whenever you're in high school, you can be like, oh, man, I made a play just like that when I was in high school. There's no footage of it, but it happened. And nobody can <laughs> yeah, say boo about it because you can't yeah. prove it wrong. Yeah, but anyway, you know, I was I was laughing at that tweet uh, about the game. D- do you have the tweet handy? Uh, it was. Oh no, it says it was... something like this is. The gist of it is that the Department Eight... of Defense spends eight hundred billion dollars, and this is the best they could do in defense. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, was I was like that's... seventy points. Yeah. That's, that's funny. No, we were, I mean, we were, we were going back and forth when sticking in the game. And I, I don't know, I, until the last second onside kick was recovered, I really thought we might have a chance to get it to overtime. This seriously, the pick six, because at the pick six, you're taking we full advantage of me opening yeah, up sorry. the West Point football thing. <laughs> yeah. we're gonna Can have I to say move something on. about football really quick? <laughs> yeah. Every See, time you, give, I... you give Con the rope and he thinks he's a cowboy. <laughs> Every time I hear the term pick six, which I have no idea what it means, but remember that McDonald's um, ad that was like, let me get a McPick too. I always, every time, every, as you guys talk talking, I, let me get a pick six too. I'm I want a, you to I'm never know what that. Pick six I don't is. know what that's about, Kate. Uh, okay. Thank I have no you for idea. bringing it up. Yeah. Okay, uh, cool. let's, let's move on to our friends in Russia for round number one, because the Russians are back at it again. I think honestly, a lot, these kind of stories about Russia come out about once a month, maybe even more so. This propaganda. I'm surprised that the New York Post put this up there. This should be coming out from RT News. I think that they do this type of thing just so people are like, oh, Russia people, they're they're fucking tough. Well, I'm not sure. That being said, I'm not sure how true this is. Kate, walk us through what happened. Well, you're right. And I'm at the bottom, I'm going to read you because this was blogged by Pardon My Takes Billy Football. Mm-hmm. And it worked on him because- And true- I'm, and he's a he's a troop by some would say stolen valor. We believe he's the real deal. But and on he our dozen team is very much in his commentary at the bottom, very much team Russia. It's clear to see mm-hmm. uh, a decorated Russian boxer is in grave condition after fighting off and stabbing a bear to death after it killed his friend. I heard screams. They shouted a bear, said eyewitness Dennis Chabatar. He uh, was talking to, (laughs) why would I read this? Like people know, you know, (laughs) East to West news uh, in (laughs) Russia. Anyway, um, the professional boxer Ilya Medvedev, 23, was fishing with his friend Vyastrelav Slava Dudnik, 48, when the Uh, two were attacked. Long time, absolutely, Slava Dudnik. Absolutely. Brick by brick, Slava Dudnik, rest in in peace. Uh, When the two were attacked by a brown bear. The beast reportedly mauled Dudnik to death before proceeding to attack his younger pal. Chebitar was reportedly fastening the team's boat to the riverbank when he heard screams and shouts of a bear, which prompted the angler to rush into the forest to aid his buddies, where he later heard gunshots. Upon arriving at the scene, he saw Slava dead and Medvedev finishing the bear off with a knife. Prior to his arrival, the boxer, who was in the Russian National Championship and other contests, had fired a total of four shots at the fierce critter. 
despite call, calling this bear a critter is uh is adorable. um <laughs> this is a little critter this yeah, little, critter, this little 800 pound critter yeah Once just, you're over 300 pounds you're not a critter anymore yeah and several bullet wounds did nothing to slow the bear uh, and he was able to knock the firearm out of the guy's hand. So he clearly was at least a tan belt. Left with no other recourse, Medvedev started stabbing it with a knife, recounted Chebtar. He must have said, I wish a motherfucker would. And there was mm-hmm. the bear. Finally, he managed to dispatch the predator, but suffered serious wounds in the struggle. Chebtar dragged the barely alive boxer to the boat, took him to the hospital, where he is in intensive care with cuts all over his body, pretty much. Now, this is Billy's commentary on it. Here you go. Here we go. The thing about Russia is most of that gigantic country is wilderness with zero suburban sprawl. As we see another example of Russians being badass, it's a miracle we won the Cold War. To be honest, I think the only reason we won is that Russians couldn't focus all their energy on one thing. You got nukes, politics, bears, things like feeding their own people. It gets tough. If it wasn't for Siberian bears, I think we would have lost. If Russians didn't have to be so badass all the time in their day to day, maybe they would have more time for things like making communism work. Billy football. I don't know. You guys might have to denounce him off your troops. I don't know. I think we got to hear him out. I think this this is the type of thing that needs to get sussed out. We don't, we don't talk about the lack of bears. I mean, because as you all know, there is no such thing as a naturalized bear in the United States. All of those bears that we have here, such as the brown bear, the black bear, even the grizzly bears in parts of Alaska, and other parts of like Montana and Idaho, all of those are immigrant bears. We don't have any type of bears that our own Russia does. So if you have to deal with that and you're dealing with communism and you have to paint those cathedrals that are in St. Petersburg every six mm. to eight years, that's a lot of stuff to focus on that we don't have so to worry about. Work. They're busy yes. bees. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's, that's privilege, honestly. But so now you sound that. like you're denouncing your previous take that you could fight and beat a bear. Oh, I could because I would have better guns. I mean, that's uh, the problem here. If you shoot oh, well, a bear five stop, or six stop, times stop, and it stop, doesn't stop, go stop, down, stop, that's stop, the wrong stop, kind of gun. Stop, stop. You can't talk about, yes, I would win a bear fight and bring a gun into it. Sorry. Yeah. No, that, that's stupid. Why not? That guy and did. You- We're talking about it right now. That's the whole premise of the story. The guy shot the bear five or six times and then had to stab him with a knife. No, you don't Why get can't a gun I? in this because you can't, you can't have a gun in this story. And let me tell no. you, based on the data, Bears are 2.5 to five times as strong as a person. You get a knife still. And I'll give you this. Way low. I'll give you this. I would have guessed. I would have said 10. I would have said 10 times. I think the young, this is, I don't know if this is fucked up. I could definitely kill a baby bear. Like how are we talking? We talking toddler bear? Probably once it hits six, once six months, I couldn't. I think six months is the bear cut off for me. Once Hmm. the, once the baby bear is weaned, then you don't have a shot. Well, I mean, of course, I would never. But if I had to. Uh, oh, oh, I'm taking out a baby bear. If I get the opportunity, because it's Caps. like. What? Um, no, you, I, I, you never know what that bear is going to grow up and do. It might grow up and attack Billy football. You don't want that. Nick, what do you got? I just want to know like what tactics you guys would use. Like, would you use something so, you guys learned in the military? Because I have no idea what strategy I would take into this fight. You got to try to get. Listen. You got to think like a bear's like arms are kind of on the shorter side. They can't like reach behind it so much. It's like you got to get behind the bear because the bear wants to keep everything in front of it. Use its paws to smack the shit out of you. You get behind that bear, put a little rear naked choke. Maybe you just mess with his ears, pull on his ears. Nobody likes their ears being pulled oh, on. I think twisty. you got a chance. Bears are twisty, man. They'll you know what I'm you. doing? What? I'm, I'm pulling a note out of Kate's book and I'm getting as many fake mice as I can just to scare the shit out of those bears. Right. You got to distract them in fun and different ways. You got to prank them and make them feel embarrassed. You know, that's yeah. the only way. You got to nice get behind karate it. chop. A nice a splinter maybe a in doink, the paw. A can I use sticks? Eyes. Yeah, you definitely got to gouge yes, eyes. You can use sticks for sure. Here's the thing. When fighting a bear, all other typical rules don't apply. Like if you get into a bar fight, you're not supposed to do certain things. Or like in the UFC, they have certain things like no fish hooks, no eye gouging. All that goes out the window when you're That's why I said bear. that's what Valley Tudo is. What the hell is Valley Tudo? Anything goes. It's Brazilian mixed martial arts. It's where Wendell oh. Silva got his start. You could do anything. You can headbutt somebody. You can grab them by the testicles. You can bite their nipples. You can do whatever you want. Anything goes. Okay. I'm just like, you know, I'd like to just go on record and saying I would... Hope to God I am never faced with a scenario where I have to tangle with a bear. Bears hate titty twisters. I know that. They for sure. really do. That's for sure. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
We'll All right, let's move on to round number two. We're going to talk a little bit about space beers because scientists have discovered a cloud of alcohol 1,000 times the diameter of our solar system. And before we really get into that, I sent you guys a TikTok that I found after we had been talking about how there's some things that we can't comprehend. I am mistakenly, and this is a correction to the log, I mistakenly said that the sun is only like 70 or 80 times bigger than the earth. Turns out the sun is 1 million times bigger than the earth so this guy to give us a he was he's like a professor and so he said people have a difficult time really comprehending even what a million is like thinking about what a million is and so he had these little balls these little gel balls that he put inside a fish bowl and they're the tiny little tiniest little balls and it filled up the entire fish bowl. he's like this is a million you would have to fit a million of these little balls inside as each one of these little balls is earth going inside a fish ball that's how much bigger the sun is and then they're the biggest star that we know of is a billion times bigger than our star you're than breaking my brain you're breaking my brain dude it's yeah. just watching it's it i was just like how like what numbers do you put together that you can figure that out that's well, all that's, made up this it's all this made up it's alcohol. like our it's like our deficit that's just made mm-hmm. up Mm -hmm. This alcohol cloud in space is enough to fill 400 trillion trillion. So like trillion squared, I guess, 400 trillion trillion pints of beer. That's how much alcohol is floating in this cloud. Yeah, it certainly is. Unfortunately, it's not the kind we want. So this giant Mm -hmm. cloud of alcohol is in a region known as W3OH, and it's Mm -hmm. 6,500 light years away. Unfortunately, it's methyl alcohol, which is the kind, it's like wood alcohol. So you would see it in like antifreeze pesticides, windshield wiper fluid, paint thinner, certain types of fuel. Definitely don't want to drink it, but I can see a smoke pit there. Probably not for the best, but it's basically poison. Um, but there also is ethyl, ethyl alcohol. The drinkable kind is also part of that mega cloud. You just have to figure out. You just got to find it. If the Space Force starts working on it now, they could probably get it sorted out. Um, it might seem strange that there are alcohol clouds in space, but a great deal of molecular chemistry goes on between molecular clouds and dust in outer space. So when these little molecules hit the space dust, all sorts of cool shit happens. And sometimes that's booze, especially because hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, that's all alcohol is. So you get that mixed together, you get these massive 400 trillion trillion pint alcohol clouds floating through space. Um, cute fact, the particular alcohol cloud mentioned in this story surrounds a stellar nursery a baby <laughs> a bunch of baby stars so, yeah i also saw that did you know there's something called baby planets did you are you familiar with that people are talking no. about this have you seen no. it very jay leno no. of me <laughs> there's these baby <laughs> <Did you see laughs> that? people are talking about this have you seen this did you, you see this? this have you seen you this see have you this? heard about this there's a baby planet <laughs> they're calling baby planets planets that are like five million years old buddy that's not a baby that's a toddler. Well, well, it depends I on mean, time. Relative, well, it, yeah. Comparison if, is the thief of joy and science. If we live to be a thousand years old, we'd still be babies, you know? Well, okay. But some I, of us I give are you, 40. You know? All right, listen, listen. Oof. I'm going to tell you right now, okay? I can make you live to a certain age, whatever you want, how long you live in. Oh, me, I'm done. If I, I will not, this is a promise to the listener. I will not reach the age of 100. At 99, the day before my 100th birthday, I'm going skydiving and I want to try to make myself into a human harpoon. I want people to throw out a bunch of breading and fish and stuff to the, into the ocean. And I want to see if I could take out a blue whale because I recently came across <laughs> some information about blue whales that are that will absolutely blow your mind. One of which is that they come 10 gallons every time. Okay. Like a, a blue whale will come 10 gallon, 40 liters of cum is what we're talking about here. All right. And their penises are measured in meters. Okay. Kate, what's your your answer? 86. 86. That's it. Yeah. I don't want to go past 86. I doubt I'll make it there. I have a feeling. Uh, What if you're a spry 85 though? I think you'll change your answer because the 80, I honest to God believe that 80 is the new 65 80 mm. is yeah. not that old when we were young and we i was going with my grandpa and grandma to nursing homes yeah. to sing bible songs to the, all the other people that had lost their teeth already and they were gumming like this like 
you know how like, people in the nursing mm-hmm. home all the time like gumming themselves and shit like whenever i would go sing those people were 80 you're not seeing very many 80 years old at nursing home now no they're all north at 90 what about you nick well, like to make an announcement, a great Nona, super Nona turned 90 mm-hmm. on Saturday. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she just turned 90. But I, I would say that I, I, I agree with chaps. I don't think 80 is as old. Like my father is 76 and he, you know, seems pretty fine. So mm-hmm. I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 90. I think 90 is my age. Yeah. I mean, with the advances in modern science. I'm hoping to get to 125. Oh, no okay. way. All right. No. Uh-uh. If long, I can't, long. if I have to start <laughs> dipping steak into wine because my teeth are so soft, I want to be out of here. Well, that's what I'm talking about. I think science is going to continue to improve where life as you get older will not be the same as we know it now. Would like you guys that- go to, let's say, because those porcelain fronts like Marty Mush got to make his teeth look better. Veneers. Yeah, the veneers. Those mm-hmm. things are really, really expensive. Like you, mm-hmm. you could spend 40, 50 grand on it. Yeah, something like two, two, two grand or five grand per tooth or something tooth. crazy. Yeah, yeah, depending on how many teeth you have, which it varies from person to person, you could spend a lot of money on that. You know, you can get those things done in Mexico and Cancun for like three grand for the whole set. That's yeah, nothing. but then you're subject to using somebody in Mexico and or Cancun. I don't think that that's, a, I think that that was an accurate thing years ago. I don't think it is as much. Even like celebrities will go down to Mexico and get surgery. Hmm. No, I don't think yeah. it's as bad as it used to be. Well, I'll let you be the guinea pig for that. And I I'll, will. I'll if still... somebody, if somebody fronts at 2,500, I'll pay for my own flight to Cancun and I'll get porcelain fronts and I'll look dynamite then. Okay. If I get, porcelain teeth and i get rid of these fucking disgusting teeth i got now it's over for you hoes i'm saying that right now remember when i paid like a thousand dollars for that tooth fixer yeah. kit and then yeah. i went to colorado and you're like, Ow, my fingers hurt i'm gonna put it in my closet <laughs> yeah and then yeah. i got I ate too many edibles and i was like fuck this kit <laughs> and, then- and yeah, you had all you went through the worst mm-hmm. part because we went to colorado and you wore it the whole time and had a miserable time because you couldn't eat anything and then when you came back you were like i'm done with it yeah. after the I vacation went, which made no sense right the whole time I, we there, edible, I had the munchies vacation, so bad and i was like this ruined the munchies and blah blah, blah. and then i quit now my teeth yeah. are all fucked up still i remember <sighs> you got gotten the, the rental car and you started talking and i'm thinking to myself is something lisping really is something wrong with kate is she <laughs> i was like okay? i cannot do hey guys like, <laughs> like yeah what? we're supposed to do meet and greets and like a you live guys show. Go like, yeah <laughs> uh, that's sugar go for Popeye. <laughs> You know that my teeth were hurt. <laughs> All right, let's anyway. move on to round number three. We're going to get you some actual good advice because, well, one, the NFL, the way that they're handling this Washington football team investigation is an absolute fiasco of epic mm-hmm. proportion. And you would think I would understand more if this was an organization that had that was like a real premier organization in the NFL that does things typically right. Like the green Bay Packers are like the, there's not a whole lot that do it right all the time, but Steelers, giants. Yeah. The Steelers are giants. Like they're, they're good organizations that do those types of things, but them coming out and protecting the Washington football team, which is constantly under Mm -hmm. scrutiny for doing stupid shit. I mean, so many sexes and not even just like outside of football, but even inside of football, they ruined RG three's career by having a terrible field that gave him two ACL tears in the, in a time period of two years. Like they are just constantly doing the wrong thing. And then the NFL protects this team and all the owners, of course they are. They're circling the wagons, the other billionaires protecting the other billionaires from getting any type of trouble or action. But the way that they're going about the football team thing and the only person getting in trouble is John Gruden is bizarre. Bizarre. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they, John Gruden did the the real cardinal sin. He put it in writing. Like not yes. only did the things that he said horrific, obviously, like racist, homophobic, sexist, all of those things. Dumb to say it and despicable to say it. But then to also put it in writing on your work email, not like your Gmail, not your fucking Yahoo, not your Hotmail, but your dot .NFL email is just stupid beyond comparison. Yeah, that's just day one stuff. I mean, listen, 
everybody, I'm not just saying people in, in company emails, or whatever, but I think everybody throughout the course of their day, week, month, whatever, says things that they say it in closed company and, and some are worse than others, obviously. And I'm not condoning anything that Gruden said about anything. I think all the things he said were despicable, but even things that aren't necessarily racist or homophobic or sexist, things are said in conversations that you wouldn't want in writing. And everyone kind of just knows I wouldn't put that in a work email. It's really basic. So the fact that he was doing this is just beyond comprehension. Well, to Even me, it's something easy, like, go ahead, Kate. It's easy to comprehend because these guys have all been doing this shit for so long that they feel like they're invincible. They have mm. such a sense of entitlement and power that they think they're untouchable. And they literally, that's how little of a fuck they give. Because probably a lot of them figure, even if I, even if it does, so what? Nothing's going to happen to me. Uh, so I hope that this is a huge change. That and it is bizarre because that's like delusions of grandeur of football coaches. And it's a constant yes, thing. It's like, like delusion of grandeur that they have. They, they're invincible. Where like but somebody been, like a Nick so. Saban or Bill Belichick, like, dude, I understand you're a very successful person and you're the best probably ever to do your job. But you're still a football coach. Like, why are you right. acting like you're a fucking neurosurgeon? Why are you right. acting like you're the president? Well, like, that's talking down to journalists and, and things like that, just being a dick for no reason. And they get away with it because one, they have so much money. And two, people look at that as such a prestigious position. But in reality, you're still a football coach. Yeah, we've just put sports in general on such a pedestal. I mean, we all love sports. There's, I don't think there's anything wrong with loving sports. But yeah, we've put it on such a pedestal that these guys, they just start reading their own press. And what's kind of crazy about Gruden is what what what's he literally done recently, right? Like he won the Super Bowl in 2002. That with was Tony Dungeon's team. Yeah, that was 19 years ago. And he was like, you know, the, the wonderkind coach coming on up and he was super young but he hasn't done anything since then so for him to still believe that he's this hot sh you know hot shot it was just a little perplexing that he would still maintain this mentality and his years without like having a Derek brooks led defense and tony dungy's cover two system that people hadn't figured out yet like that's the reason why they won the super bowl not because gruden they weren't putting up 50 points a game for his yeah, I mean, offense they were shutting people out Listen, you know, no shade against Brad Johnson because certainly he's done more in his football career than I, I have ever hoped to. But I mean, you, you did it with Brad Johnson. So what does that say about your third defense? worst quarterback ever to win the Super Bowl? Who do you think's first two? Uh, number one would be Peyton in Denver his last year. Um, I think he was the worst quarterback to ever win a Super Bowl that year. Not overall, obviously, yeah, but that yeah, year yeah. he was the worst quarterback ever to win. And then I would say John Kitna. Ooh. That's a good, that's a good choice. I okay. would say it goes Peyton Johnson Kitna. Yeah. Side right. note, this, this is all reminiscent to me of, uh, remember, remember David Petraeus? What happened with him? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you You're remember, right. do you remember Marine General John Allen? Uh, oh, yeah. having the uh, have had an extramarital affair with john allen socialite. does not look like a general either if you saw no. john allen walking down the street you're like that guy works at lowe's like he, he doesn't look like a general at all but the reason why we're talking about this is because military or clearance jobs which you can go to to find different types of jobs in the defense sector and other as well they wrote an article about things that you should do to in your email to make you not be john gruden one i would say don't be racist homophobic or sexist that's a big joke yeah, like if you don't do that you <laughs> you, you got a huge step forward yeah. on all the other people that are out there doing that. But he says, one, someone else is looking. You need to remember, this is from the New York Times, someone else is looking. Assume your email will have unintended readers. This applies to the case of the New York Times or the office genius who forwards emails without thinking. Don't include content that you don't want widely shared ad hominem attacks on others or language. Great advice there. Don't do that. Yeah, and this is, it's actually from uh, Steve Leonard. He's Doctrine Man. He's like this pretty popular military mm -hmm. follow on Twitter and Instagram and everything. So yeah, this blog by him is how not to wind up in the New York Times. Like here's how you don't do it. Um, keep things short is his next one. The, the less you say, less is more. The less you say, the less chance you have to say something. And stupid. the less you say, people are actually going to read it. If, it, uh -huh, if I yeah. open up an email and there's like eight blocked paragraphs, I'm not reading that shit. No chance. Yeah. I do the same. Sometimes like, you know me, I'm like, we have to add more context, more context, more context. And I'm slowly learning. No, just chop it down. Keep it short. Number three, this pertains to me specifically. You're not as funny as you think. Uh, humor in an email is often misunderstood and misinterpreted. 
you're not <laughs> you're not a comedian basically if you find uh, yourself kate, dave, kate, kate el- say the name. Out, dave chappelle, dave chappelle. I, I don't think even if you are yeah. dave chappelle you're not putting dave chappelle jokes in your emails pal. in your email no, just, exactly. just don't do it yeah. yeah i just i think so many i think times- dave chappelle is a perfect example there like your comedy show is your comedy show but you can't be saying that in just regular conversation in business you can't yeah totally different ball of wax and people get taken i had a friend recently who at work she was just saying things straightforward and somebody misinterpreted it as and she was like what she was like totally taken aback she's like i didn't mean anything mean at all i'm just being straightforward like people get okay communicated lady question have you ever dealt with somebody who if you don't put exclamation points or a ha ha or lol where they think you're being terse so I, I actually, I still First do it to this day on this podcast too, especially when I'm emailing a man. And this was especially true before when I worked some corporate jobs and stuff like that. I always did make it exclamation points sincerely, like our best wishes, blah, blah, blah. I always tried to make sure that my tone sounded sweet in emails and I never really thought too much about it. Um, but a tons well, of thank yous, tons of whatever. And then I, looking at the emails I would get from like, guys, don't write this way. Why am I doing this? Mm-mm. Like same with how I say, sorry, all the time. Like, <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, it's, it's something else that's out of your control when you're writing an email, you cannot control how that other person wants to interpret that email. Right? Like, so let's say I, I have a, a tense relationship with someone. I might interpret that how I want to interpret your email just to fuel whatever my angle is. So you might not intend it. I don't know whose example you're using, Kate, but whatever that person's example, they clearly didn't intend it to be a certain way, but it was misinterpreted another way. So mm-hmm. it's uh, it's an easy thing to have happen. And what yeah. Khan's is talking about is intent versus impact. Like you have yeah. the, an intent to send something that's very innocuous. It's just basic information. The impact that it has on somebody else, you can't control the impact. You could just try to clarify your intent after the fact, but how it, something impacts somebody else. We say stuff on this show all the time that I imagine could be offensive to somebody that's listening. And mm-hmm. that's not our intention. Like the way that we frame something or the way that we say something in the moment, just having a conversation, you could be a lot more, ca- that is one benefit is you could be a lot more calculated and concise with your language you when you are writing it out rather than speaking in a format like this but you can't you can't really control the impact that it has on somebody else just your intent yeah mm-hmm. I mean, yeah yeah there's the last been, one yeah there's been actual like eq trainings like you know in the, the corporate life that i that i left um there's like eq trainings like and how to write emails and like how long you should wait before responding emotionally first not because some people just respond within the first five minutes and their intent completely blows up the situation Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you see yeah. that on TikTok too, where people, those ones that'll be like, as per my email, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like they're going, yeah. And there is like almost the military has those like noted very well, like those comments back that are very, very loaded and how you would say it back mm-hmm. and, or bless your heart in the South, which essentially means fuck you. You're fuck stupid. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, finally, number five, email is not a fire and forget system. Long after you move on, the email will be sent and sent on a server somewhere timing too, right? Like if you have timing of whenever, if you're making a topical discussion or a topical joke late years later, that joke is not on everybody's mind and they don't know what the context is. And then it could come off looking very, very poor. Well, do you guys remember too, even if it's not your employer looking at it, emails get hacked and stuff all the time. And one of the biggest ones, um, it was when I was working at comedy central, it was, um, Sony's remember when Sony emails got hacked and it was like, with North Korea, right? I was over the North Korea thing. It was the over North the Koreans North Korea thing. Them. Yeah. But over 100, 170 comma 000. That <laughs> many that. emails got leaked. <laughs> and it was actors and actresses, um, like how much they were all making. Uh, this actress, it's like high exec Sony execs being like, oh, we don't want this actress. She's a, she's a has been or whatever. And it's like, no, dude, that's Angelina Jolie. And she's never going to work with you again. Like there was all sorts of drama and gossip between all the, like, big deal people it was like a huge deal Uh, but i can see that as a conversation that you actually have like that does suck like and that you're right kate it does happen but if you're a movie exec and you're talking to other movie exec and you're talking about casting you don't want to pay somebody that you think might be a little bit past their limelight and they're not going to bring in the box office numbers like if you're going like for example if you want a movie to open up in imax you're not casting fucking adam sandler but it's the way they did it it came out that like oh so and so's a has been oh kevin hart's yeah. a whore for this or that leonardo dicaprio is despicable for like it was shit like that no, we that, don't whore shame 
that we don't horse shame ever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was just, it was kind of a mess, but I think about that too. You just, would you want it to be, that's another good thing to ask yourself, like before I send this email or this text or post this thing, like, would I want this to be in the New York times, like, Mm -hmm. or whatever publication, like maybe, maybe not. Probably not. It's just, I'm sorry. Like this, all this stuff just seems very, very obvious. And, and yet here we are again, talking about another story about emails, getting people in trouble. And it's just, and it's smart people, like people yeah. that should know better, which is yeah. really crazy. But I think right, it goes back to what Kate said. Sorry. Last thing. It just goes back to what Kate said. And people just get to a point where they just think they're above the law. Yeah. No doubt. All right, let's move on to round number four. We're going to actually give you some good information that you can use in your free time. And you can wear your shady rays while you do that. Cause shady rays are the best sunglasses in the business. People are always like, Oh, well, it's not summertime. Why should I get new sunglasses? Uh, have you ever been on the slopes? My friend, have you ever been on a mountainside? Burn your have, retinas out. Have you ever tried to chew up a rattlesnakes with no teeth? I don't think you have my friend, because you need to have some shady rays. They are premium polarized shades at a fraction of a price of the big name brands. Even if you're like cons and lose them 45 times, they're going to send you a brand new pair. They have tons of styles for the active go getter and the daily commuter. all just starting at 48 bucks. The replacement shades, if they're lost or broken for any reason, they're going to send it right to your door as well. That's one of the best parts about the company. They also do things for other people, including they give, 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every single order placed, and they have donated over 20 million meals to date. You can fit all of those meals, 20 million into the sun, probably 40 million times, I would imagine, probably. which is pretty incredible and mm-hmm. a way to heat up your trifecta of nutrition, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But <laughs> change the way you wear your sunglasses. Join the team that has your back for life. Shady Rays is running their deepest deal of the season exclusively for us. Use a promo code ZBT for 50% off two or more pairs at ShadyRays.com. Buy one, get one free. You can get two pairs for 48 bucks redeem only at shaderays.com where you can find all their newest and best shades they have everything you could possibly need if you're going mountain biking if you're going fishing if you're doing whatever you can do all of it with shady rays on that beautiful little face of yours all right let's move on to round number four where we're going to be talking about some freebies even though it's not it's not veterans day yet it's coming around the corner and there's going to be a lot more freebies that kate always does a lovely job uh, giving you what deals there are out there at your local Applebee's, Chili's, and get and those riblets. You. This is different though, because Staff Sausage on Twitter said, "What's the veteran benefit that most people do not know about?" Our friend Lethality Jane said, "Free entrance to all national parks, which is a great one, but there's many, many more that are available to military members and veterans." Kate, what are some of those? Yes, indeed. V Nephi said, if you're into breweries or distilleries, a lot of them will give you free tours and tastings, like a lot of like a free beer flight or this or that. Um, again, not something I would necessarily ask for, but if you see, if I see a sign that's like, Hey, are you a veteran? We do this. I'd be like, yeah, that's me. Fuck. Yeah, of course. Uh, Lisa we should make Am- a shirt that says, do you have military discounts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just wear, like just casually point. Like if you're your going shirt. to like the outlet mall or something and you're like, oh, I'm going to wear this shirt today. So I don't have to Dude. ask. Like, hmm. Yeah. That would just eliminate so much of the awkward, like, hey, you know, because listen, I love getting it, but there is that twinge of awkwardness when you say like, hey, by the way, like, do you offer a military discount? And, and then you they know- put the, the cashier in such a bad spot because they're like, well, oh, unfortunately not. I wish we did. I wish we had one. I've been saying it. And, I, and like, no, I'm not going to attack you, cashier. Like, it's not, right. your, oh, yeah. it's not your fault. Yeah. It's not your what fault. if you know we what put love- a safe a safe word out there like what if you went up to the cash register and said flair flit and they're yeah. like ah, nah man or sorry. if everybody you know? did what me and big cat did and said that everybody in the country should have to recognize the promo code balls from glenny balls and get 10 percent off of whatever you want mm-hmm. 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 i love the cashiers though when they say like no we don't but you know what let me like type in my employee discount for you and it's like 10 mm-hmm. percent. i'm like hey what thank you yeah mm-hmm. yeah want to move uh, Lisa amp 716 said certain states offer low real estate taxes for disabled veterans. If whatever state you're in, if you're buying a home or yeah. property or whatever, always check and see what yeah, the benefits Google in that. your state you are. Google just Google that. it. What, and, or yeah, just other quick... state benefits, whatever state you live in, if you're a disabled veteran or if you're a veteran period, just go veteran benefits yeah. in Iowa. If you like to pop on your shady rays and hit the slopes, Check mm-hmm. out the Epic Pass. So for a hundred, this thing is awesome. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, normally it would be about eight hundred and nineteen dollars for civilians for stateside resorts. It was a hundred and fifty-seven dollars. The Epic Pass for ski and snowboard resorts. So Google that. That's pretty cool. Um, C C T Lyle said, "I find that even though it's a massive GI bill on steroids, most don't know about Voc Rehab, vocational rehab." 
75% of people use it for undergrad, but you can transfer it to your kids, killing two birds with one stone. Google it. I don't know much about folk rehab, but uh, apparently a lot of good stuff. Um, this guy, this is really helpful. Chris J. Hillman, 42. The elites don't want you to know this, but the big ass crows by the barracks dumpsters are free. Whoa. You can you can take them home. I have 458 what is crows. That? Crows, like the birds, the smartest like the bird. Birds. Did you know yeah, crows very are the smart. smartest bird? No, it's I didn't, but why would you want crow. a bird? Why would you they're not? Very, why would you, you ever not? try to police call goldfish around your couch? You bring That's a couple true. of crows, all that thing cleaned up, look at you split. Yeah, uh, all right, I got you. Someone said, heard there's free BJs at the Sausage Castle on Veterans Day. You can <laughs> indeed true. get a free blowjob at the Sausage uh-huh. Castle on Veterans Day. What was Coming the cum guzzler's go- 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 name? Uh, Jenny Jizz oh, and her, not, her not husband. Oh, not I apologize. Yes, no, she doesn't. She more just gets it splashed. Yeah. And her husband is Mike the Come Artist. Oh, Come Artist. There we go. Yes, the Come Artist. Um, Mike the Blue Whale, some people call him. Vet tickets. 40 liters. Tickets to any imaginable, uh, to any event imaginable. And most of them, are, it's just the service fee of $15. So free tickets to pretty much anything, which is awesome. I'm on that. There's there's definitely some good shows and, and events on there. So that's definitely worth it. You skipped one that I think is important, though, from Lugie Sam. Oh, yeah. If you're disabled, um, you don't have to pay the funding fee on your VA loan. What? So I That's didn't, a good one. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, didn't I didn't know that either. I bet um, the people at Cross Country Mortgage, though. So. GI Bill recipients can get an extra year of benefits if they're in a STEM program. I did not know that either. So in, it even works on trade schools like underwater welding. So you can get an extra year for that. Discounted fish and game licenses in whatever state you're in. Uh, again, Google it. The Armed Forces Vacation Club. You can travel the world for extremely cheap. The Service Members Civil Relief Act. Um, this guy was saying, Corey Holmes, that I had a decent amount of credit card debt prior to the military, and the companies had to decrease my interest rates to a minimum of 6%. They paid back about seven months of high interest rates to figure out my balance, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I guess if you're in... A lot of people said this too, whatever the platinum card is. So say you have Amex or MasterCard, whatever the top level card is, I guess there's an annual fee. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And that's like 200 bucks for that one. I was just looking at getting it recently. It it gets waived. So the platinum card fee for American Express is $695. That is completely waived. If you're in the military. I'm going to that bad boy today. If you like going to PGA golf events, birdies for the brave gets you in for free, free tickets. That's pretty fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Um, one year free at LinkedIn, especially if you're new getting out, take advantage Wait, of it. Wait, you got to pay for LinkedIn? No. Uh, for a that? certain level of it. I guess you get oh. the top tier level of LinkedIn for free. Oh, for Uber year. level LinkedIn. This Super is cool. LinkedIn. Massachusetts and Ohio, if you're a resident there, they give you straight cash for any deployment to Afghanistan or Iraq. Um, and somebody replied, it's true. I got $1,400. And yeah, we had other- like, there was like three dudes that are in the kennels that I was in and they're all from Mass. And the three dudes from there, they came back. And then like three months later, they got all like 1400 bucks. And they're like, where do we get this for? What is this? Did you guys get this? I was like, I didn't get that. And then they, they figured out, they tracked it down. It was because they, they went to Iraq. Yeah. So check that out. Um, Chevy delete this said veteran license plates. And I, uh, several other people said this, my good friend said they're way less likely to pull you over for speeding if you got them. So that's why I'm like, and not only that. The difference of like, because I have to go get Cardi at the end of the day now, which is like a fucking nightmare. I work from home and I have an hour commute every day, so <laughs> yeah. I, which is the worst. And so I, if I take my wife's Tahoe, it has the purple heart plates on it, but I, I got my Tundra during COVID. So I didn't like put in all that information or go down there yet. So I just have regular Texas plates on that. If I'm trying to get over into traffic in my wife's Tahoe, it's instant. Like people let me over no problem at all. If I'm driving my normal ass plates, people are like, fuck you guy, you're not getting in, no shot. So that's a big benefit. And some states like Texas, you don't even have to pay to park at the airport if you have those kind of plates too. Whoa, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's definitely mm-hmm. worth getting. There's no shame as long as you're not going supervisor. I am a right. military member. There is no <laughs> and we shame. We listed like 15 bennies. or 20 here, but there was hundreds on the Instagram. So if you're curious and you yeah. want to scroll through there, go check that out. There's a lot of stuff that you can check out and get it for a big discount, which is awesome. Why not use it? And I, I'm so tired of people saying that it's not entitlement's not a bad word. You earned it, you're entitled to it because you earned something. Right. And we've got to get rid of that as a as a nasty little word in our language. And 
if you served in the military or wherever and you get benefits, you're fucking dumb if you don't use it. It's stupid because the businesses don't care. Like they don't care at all. I yeah, mean, they've you think $695 yeah. means shit to American Express. They don't give a fuck about mm-hmm. 695 bucks, but no. you do. I do. Yeah. I care about 695 bucks. Dave might not. Dave Portnoy might not, but I do. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. A lot of money. Oh, yeah. All right, let's move on to round number five, which is presented by our friends at Trifecta Nutrition. If you want to have more money in your pocket, stop using all those different delivery services and things like that. Make sure that you have Trifecta Nutrition because ZBT supports all military servicemen, active and veteran. And the most important tool that you have in your little toolkit is your body. And we're not talking about just your flaps, or your dick, or your tits, or whatever you got there. We're talking about your actual health, your heart health, and that can all be helped by eating good nutritious food that is prepared for you by an actual chef you're going to have whatever you want if you're eating keto if you're eating vegan if you're eating vegetarian they have all that stuff the meal plans start with 40 percent off if you use a promo code zero at trifecta nutrition no wasted time cooking or cleaning just throw that bad boy into the air fryer the microwave the oven whatever you got you know your hot tub i think a hot tub will work i watched this fella Mm -hmm. recently on instagram video uses hot tub to heat up some rice like one of those instant rice bags brilliant Mm-hmm. He uses right. it for everything. Like his hot tub, he will do all kinds of stuff. He's boiled chicken in there. It takes a little longer. I'm not sure if he'll get some in poisoning, but I mean, it's mm. worth a shot, I guess, if you got that hot tub lying around. But make sure you go to Trifecta Nutrition, get 40% off with the promo code zero. That's a great deal. Let's move on to round number five. Round number five, we're going to do a little snake goofing over in India. It feels like, well, I say this and I say it feels like all the time there's these crazy stories coming out of India. Well, no shit. There's like a billion point two people that live there. Like yeah. <laughs> one third of the population lives in India or like one quarter lives in India, which is insane that that many people there. They're going to pass China in population in like the next five years as well. Um, but they have a lot of snakes going on over there and they'll fuck around with cobras like quick. Uh, there's so many videos that I see like looking for blogs of people just doing outrageous stuff with snakes. Have you guys ever seen that one where there's like this cobra pit, it's like a cobra zoo and it's in India. And this guy walks in, it's like a concrete building that you would kind of like squid games, I guess, but smaller. And he goes in there and the cobras, you know, when I didn't know this until I was a little bit older, when cobras are just slithering around, their hoods aren't out. It's only when they're like alert that their hoods go out. And so he has all these snakes that are like slithering around. And then he comes in with some like mice and stuff. And they all like stand up, like looking like whenever he turns into the cobra. Mm -hmm. And then he'll, he goes up from behind, gives such little fucks that when these cobras, he'll like slap them in the back of the head. Like Mm -hmm. you're back at the rifle range and you fell asleep (laughs) and your corporal's behind you. (laughs) You don't want to deal with these snakes. They don't give a shit like about cobras, nothing. They're just constantly around. They're playing little flutes and what have you, making them come out of baskets. Well, this guy, a man in China or a man in India has died after chewing on a baby snake in an apparent revenge attack on the reptile. According to the Times of India, which is one of my favorite websites in the world, they captured a baby pit by Viper in retaliation for earlier attack in his home. Um, And he was allegedly under the influence of alcohol at the time uh you think he was probably under the influence of that big old alcohol cloud that they have floating around in the galaxy yeah it's, that's right. a lot of alcohol to be fucking with yes. hip viper um he bit the snake the snake reportedly bit him on the leg and so kate speaking of high chair have you ever heard the advice if your baby bites them bite them back i i have heard that advice i will never terrible use advice. it <laughs> terrible, terrible fucking advice yeah that's absolutely. awful advice do not and bite we're about your to hear why we're about mm-hmm. to hear why <laughs> and a yeah. statement issued to police and reported to the news outlet the guy's family said he was bitten more than 10 f- times on the face while chewing the snake yeah so the snake bit him on the leg he got mm-hmm. mad picked up the snake went to bite bite it as in retaliation and end up getting his face chewed this on could be badly. the kind of scenario though where if you get bit by a snake like this and your your blood's already thin because you know you've consumed some alcohol where you sober up and you're like, I already know I'm dead. This thing is super poisonous. It's going to kill me. So if I'm going to die, so is this snake. And it's like, you're going down with me. Right? Right. Like, I, I feel like if any animal is killing me, like the grizzly bear in round one. Yeah. If you're a brown bear and you're attacking me and I have the ability to like cut your testicles off or something, I'm going for it. You got oh, yeah. to you gotta take, take everything you can, you can get on the way yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, he didn't think he said because it was a baby. He didn't think there was any venom. So his family's like, you need to go to the hospital. You need to go to the hospital. He's like, OK, idiots, there's no venom in this. And he kept on chilling. 
which he probably told him you got to do your own research (laughs) yeah you got to do your own research so it didn't work out too well for him uh not great not great what would you do what's your immediate response i because i get nervous here because there's rattlesnakes all over the fucking place and they're and early in the morning. I'm turning because uh, I am 39, as I found out earlier today. Mm-hmm. When I go down the steps to go out to my backyard, I'll often do it barefoot because it's first thing in the morning. It's like 6:15. I'm letting the animals out, like letting the dogs out, and I'll go down. And sometimes I'll do it in the dark. And I just know. And this is going to be one of those old takes exposed things. I know eventually I'm going to walk and step down. I'm going to get bit by a rattlesnake. I just know um, it's going to happen. Probably. So you have to have a plan in place. This guy clearly. Failed to plan, so he planned to fail. Mm-hmm. We stayed at a place in outside of Austin in the Highland or whatever you call it, the Highlands or whatever. Hill Country. Hill yeah. Country. Mm-hmm. And they had so many snakes around that they actually had this system outside the house and on the paths that made a chirping sound every few. It was like a very high pitch, like, choo, choo, choo. and they said that was the only thing that kept the snakes off the trails from biting. It sounds a lot like those beeping things for blind people in big yeah. cities. Yeah, it was kind of like that. And they had like everything super well lit. They're like, yeah, you have to be like, it's no fucking joke out here. Like they are everywhere. They give you like legit safety briefs too at some of these yeah, golf they courses. <laughs> like you'll have yeah. the, the course marshals that will be out there and be like, hey, before you go out there, just make sure you know if it's living, you don't touch it out here because there's a lot of rattlesnakes. There's a lot of poisonous animals out here. Don't be messing with any of these things. And you're like, Roger that. And you have to stand at parade rest while they tell you it's fucked up. I remember at Fort Leonard Wood, we were doing training and inside one of the orange like barriers. Senate parade rest for the court marshal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there was a snake in there. I think it was a rattlesnake, like a little tiny one. Um, but, and then every now and then in the field, we'd be like doing patrols outside Camp Pendleton in the grasslands. And there would just be something, you could see the grass moving, slithering away and you could hear the rattle, but you could, but I never saw one, but you could like hear sometimes them kind of warning you to stay the fuck away. And it was kind of like, oh God. So. And when we went in Japan, habu, habu snakes were very, very popular or very prevalent over there. And we would do cave training with the dogs in order to do tracking and all that kind of stuff, scouting where they can find people that are hiding in the woods or hiding in caves. And there's occasionally in the jungles of Japan where you could go inside and you would flash a light around like a surefire light around and you could see the little snake beady eyes all over the place and those mm-hmm. and those and I was just like we got to get the fuck out of this is a safety violation how the fuck have you guys been training like this for 15 years out here <laughs> like that, there's no way that this passes an ORM worksheet mm-hmm. none no mm-hmm. habu snakes you got to get out of there because they're just they are essentially pit vipers it's the same type of thing yeah just very good and socky not great all right, let's move on to Save Rounds and Alibis, which today is presented by our good friends at Rocky Boots. Rocky Boots sent me some new hiking boots. They have some that oh, are like, yeah. because a lot of times hiking boots, I don't know how you guys feel about it, and I don't want to be judgmental, but the hiking boots that go up real high, like mid shin, I don't like those. Like, I feel like they, they just make my feet too hot. It's not natural for me to wear boots up that high. Like combat boots are different because they're thinner, like around the top, but the super thick hiking boots i don't like them and i also don't like the low top they came up with like almost like a quarter top hiking boot that has yeah. all the sturdiness of the regular hiking boot but just smaller and it's great for somebody with little ankles like me make sure mm-hmm. you pick those up because i have started hiking again with my wife she makes me do exercise on saturday morning which i absolutely hate but i've been wearing my rocky boots out there and you guys know i got shitty ankles haven't rolled them once well that's good I Mm-hmm. I've been hiking. I took my, especially breaking them in. I'm always worried when I break a new pair of hiking boots in, not the Rocky boots. I was like a billy goat in those suckers. And I can't wait. I'm way overdue to get out. I finally started taking them on little ones, little mini hikes. I want to get the baby hiking backpack now. Like the, the real hardcore one. Cash decide which, because the last time you did it, whenever you posted on Instagram, you came to a little fork in the road, like cash pick. I did. I put him in both directions. I said, which way, buddy? And when he made a sound, that's the way we went. Yeah. Okay. That's gracious. Okay. If you want to make sure that your babies are making sounds on hikes, make sure that they're wearing little Rocky boots for babies. I don't know if that's actually a thing, but moms and dads, <laughs> you can definitely wear them. Aunts and uncles too. Go to rockyboots.com. Use the promo code ZBT. You're going to get 25% off. We'll start with you, Nick, for some save rounds. What do you got? Yeah, save rounds earlier in the pod, we talked about the whole LinkedIn thing. So for any of the military members out there, the reason you'd want to have the one year is because it's like the premium version. 
where um, you'll be able to like talk to like recruiters and whatnot, like directly instead of having to like wait, like you can actually go to who posted oh. the job description. So, and then you could also see who viewed your profile and what, whatnot. No free ads, but oh, that's essentially yeah, like why that. if, if you're listening, that's why you'd want to take advantage of it. I wish you could do that on Instagram. See who's viewing your profile. Who's mm-hmm. like tiny. Yeah, it could be problematic. <laughs> yeah, well, TikTok does that, right? Like if you share a video with somebody, they're like, oh, this person watched it. I don't want that. I don't want people. I don't want to know. Because then what if they don't? Well, I don't want them to know if I well, viewed it or not. Well, on Instagram, yeah. you can see like who takes a photo of your like um like your, your, of your video yeah like it'll show on yeah. the bottom right like a little icon will pop up mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. cons so two things number one i was sad to see that the white house canceled halloween for the white house because i guess the president's traveling so there's not going to be trick-or-treaters which is like no big deal because the kid the kids just go to their own neighborhood whatever they instead of going to the white house but i guess it'd be a cool thing to say you know, back when you were a kid, you trick treated at the White House. Kelsey did the it. Easter egg hunt. Really? I think mm-hmm. I knew that. Yeah. See, like that's awesome. Um, so I think rare is it when logic wins out in a relationship. I tweeted out yesterday, someone was talking about Christmas movies or Christmas decorations. And I said, my personal preference, you know, people do whatever you want, but my personal preference is I like to keep it to everything post Thanksgiving because I think that's how you maintain. Christmas spirit. If it's just Christmas all the time, it loses its luster. And even Mm -hmm. if you you start too early, then by the time Christmas rolls around, it's like, Jesus, it's been Christmas for six weeks. Like Mm -hmm. that sucks. Alex tweeted back at me that like, oh, we're, we're making this house Christmassy at 11, you know, uh, November 15th. You don't make the rules around here, which is true, which is is true. true. That's Mm -hmm. true. But then she ordered all these new decorations for our TV stand, did a home goods run the other night for mm-hmm. more decorations, mm-hmm. gets them all. It looks amazing. I go, huh, wow, that all, that all looks amazing. It looks like not something you'd want to tear down in two weeks. So we better leave it up for the entirety of November. And she was just like, I, 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 got her. So that's how we're preserving Christmas in this household this year. There you Goodness go. Gracious. I um, like it. And then last thing I'd like to, um, I'm not one to really cancel people. Mm-hmm. I want to cancel the mask police. Okay. Oh, okay. You want to wear a mask? Cool. You don't want to wear a mask? That's cool too. I'm just tired of these people who like, they spend their whole day, like showing pictures of when the president was wearing a mask versus when he wasn't wearing a mask. I'm just over it. I don't care anymore. If you want to wear a yeah, mask, I don't care about mask. the policing of it either way. Like people yeah. who are pro, like do it all the time. Right. I don't. It's fuck. We've been doing this shit for two years. Can we Seriously. just stop? Let's just move on. It's been two years. And then, and then they always, people always think like, oh, burn God. I'm like, oh, look at this. I, I'm showing you when he's not wearing a mask, but he's preaching. About, who cares, man? Just move yeah. on. Just and move he's on. like 85. He doesn't breathe that hard anyway. Who's he infected? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just the gentle, the gentle, yeah. uh, gentle old man breath. Yeah. Kate. So that's all I got. I got literally nothing. No, I got nothing. Brain's still a scrambled mess. That's fine. I had <laughs> there was a there was a big time news story that came out. I, I guess not really that big time, but there was a, a story that came out for military news that I was actually really surprised about. And it has to deal with oh fuck, did I not save it? I'm an idiot. Oh, so no. essentially the gist is that they changed all the retirement rules for the army like they changed so many of the the retirement rules of what you can do and how much money you can have if you got if you didn't get the vaccine they could recall you i'm getting all kinds of messages from people that are on the irr the inactive reserve so if you're listening you're not a military member if you get out after four years everyone when they sign up for the most part 99 percent of people will have an eight-year contract no matter what across the board you either have to do some will do two. The Marine Corps used to have a two-year rule where you do two years active, six years inactive reserve. Inactive reserve, you don't really do anything. You just got to tell them where you live in case they need to recall you. So they'll have two years or four years or six years of active service, and then you have the other parts. They're recalling people on inactive reserve who don't get the vaccine, and they are also threatening to reduce them in rank and like bring them back to active duty for them to do it. I think that's just going way too far. If you're, I understand like the process of readiness. If you need to recall people from the IRR, 
get them vaccinated when they come back. Like make them do right. it whenever they come back. If you're out, you're fucking out. And right. also the, the army will give you this specific story was about retirement where you have certain things that you have to meet, certain requirements to retire. They changed those and didn't even have like a warning order. Everything in the military that's a big force effector has mm -hmm. a warning order for the most part. If you're going to have a new PT program, if you're going to have a new uniform, if you're going to have new um, circuits of fire that you have to shoot on the rifle range or something like that, there's a warning order that prepares you. There was zero warning order given for retirement changes for people that have been in for 20 years, one of which was they were they were trying to do 25 years. They were going to try to make it 25 years, not have congressional oversight. Just make the change inside the, own, the Department of Defense, make the change. That is so fucked up to do that to people that have devoted legitimately their entire adult lives to a volunteer yeah. service, to change it at the last minute. So fucked up. And it wasn't even the Sergeant Major of the Army that announced it. It wasn't the Chief of Staff of the Army. It was the G1 Sergeant Major of the Army hmm. that announced it. So it's like the admin chief, essentially, of the entire Army that announced these changes. He announced it on October 15th. These changes took place on October 1st. Two weeks no. after the, the change. That's took so place. bizarre. That's and it's flown I, I completely under the radar. And I, I, heard I was reading a story it. about it this morning. Or not the story. I was reading the tweets. It's like, this can't be the actual hmm. G1 Sergeant Major. It is. That's what they did. And they didn't make it. It's fucked up. We're going to look more into it. If you have yeah. any experience with that, or you have any of the circulation of the emails or anything, forward that to me. Don't use your dot mil because we talked about it in round one. The reason why, or round two, the reason why, or whatever round that was. Don't do that, but send it to me from your personal or DM it to me or whatever. I want to know about that because that's something oh. that we want to look out for you for. If we can, if we can make us think about that, we want to. Also, I told this kid I would send him the this soldier. I would send him the itinerary for the boonies camp he's at, and now I've totally lost it in my DMs. So hit me up again if you're listening. I'll send it to you. So that's that one person that applies to it, hit back <laughs> up, um, yeah, for it's been bothering me. What to do in rural in Mexico? I think that's yes. what it was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so make sure you do that. Other than that, we'll see you guys. Have a great weekend. It'll be Halloween. We can't wait to see you in your little Halloween military outfits, you little cuties. And we'll see you on Tuesday. Summer retreat.